welcome to Acrylic Code. Today we're back with a new tutorial on this animation. Before we move on, please like and subscribe and consider donating to our PayPal to support us into making more videos like this. If you like these tutorials and want to see more, have a look at our other videos in our channel, we have a lot of step-by-step -step tutorials in there. And if you're a beginner or just looking to refresh your touch designer knowledge with some practical assignments, have a look at our absolute beginner video with explanations, examples and assignments. Now back to today's tutorial. So let's start by splitting the screen and setting the right screen to top viewer. In order to render later, I'll press tab and create an out top, followed by a basic rendering network. Press tab to create a sphere sop, right click on its out to attach a geometry comp, right click on the out of the geo and while holding shift connect the camera and the light comp. Press tab to add a render top and connect its out to the out top. To avoid a render from showing in the background, go ahead and right click on an empty space, go to display and then select the backdrop tops. To make the background black, right click on the connecting line right before the out and create a transform top. In the parameter window, set the alpha to 1 and toggle on comp over background color. In the parameter window of the render, go to common and in here set the resolution to 1280 by 1280. Go back to the beginning of the network and in between the sphere stop and the geo, we're going to create an all top since we're going to be creating multiple instances of the sphere. Then let's press tab and create a line material. Drag and drop the light material to the geo and select parameter material. This will give us this grid look on our sphere. Let's go back to our sphere node and in the parameter window we'll set the connectivity parameter to rows. These options are used to select the type of surface. The primitive type parameter will set to NURBS and we will get this image. Now let's duplicate the geo node and in the parameter window go to the render tab and delete the material. Instead, we're going to add another material here, so let's press tab, add a phone material, drag and drop it on top of the new geo comp and select parameter material. In the parameter window, scale down the diffuse value so we get this kind of translucent surface on the sphere. Great, now for the next step, we're going to create an instance for each point in the sphere. So down here, let's press tab and create a null and to its input, we're going to attach a new sphere sub we're going to create. Right click on the out of the null and attach a geometry. Go to the parameter window of the sphere and we're going to scale it down. First set it to 0 and from here we go our way up until around 0.007. Go to the geocomp next, in the parameter window go to the instance tab, toggle on the instancing and in the translate op we're going to drop our null from the original network. Set translate x to be 0, translate y to be 1 and translate z to be 2. Right now we notice that the particles are being instantiated right at the surface of the lines. If we go to the geometry parameter window and increase the uniform scale value to 1.3, then the particles will move away and surround the original sphere. Now for the next step we want to bring some movement into our image. To do this we're going to create three LFOs. Let's create the first one and set the channel name in the parameter window to X. We'll copy paste the LFO twice and set the channel names of the new LFOs to Y and Z respectively. Once this is done, let's select all LFOs and set the frequency to 0.1. Then we'll press tab and add a merge operator. Select all LFOs again and connect them to the merge op. Right click after the merge and add a null chop. Right click after the null and add a limit sop. The limit sop takes the samples fed to it by chops and it creates geometry at every point in the sample. For now we only see one point here. If we connect it to the null in the top, it will still only show the one point because we're only creating one single point. To fix this we're going to add a trail chop after the merge. In the parameter window, we'll set the window length in samples. Now we see this effect on our image. These lines are hard to distinguish since this geo doesn't have any material. So let's press tab and create a constant material. Drag and drop the material onto the geo and select parameter material. And now we can see the instances being animated. But this looks a little drastic, so we're going to tweak some values. First, go to the beginning, select all LFOs and decrease the amplitude value to around 0.38. Go to the geo next and set the uniform scale back to 1. 
For the next step, we're going to change up the movement of the instancing. Right click after the trail and attach a limit chop. In the parameter window, go to the quantize tab, set the quantize value to round and the value step to 0 0.022. Go to the trial node and set the window length to 40. Now we see the instances are moving in a way that is very similar to the sphere. Now the sphere that is providing the points for the instances is this one up here and we're going to reference this sphere in a second. First, let's create a noise chop. Go to the parameter window and set the type to random. In the channel tab, set the name to rx, set the end to samples and instead of a value we're going to type op and then we're going to reference the sphere from before which is null1 and then dot num points minus 1. It's important that we subtract the 1 since the segment here is starting from 0. Great, now let's copy the noise for the Y and the Z and change the names accordingly to RY and RZ. Everything else stays the same. Then we press Tab and create a merge job. Let's select all noises and connect them to the merge job. Like so, we have here all X, Y and Z channels. Let's right click on the out of the merge and attach a math. We do this because the noise only goes from minus 1 to 1 and we want to set the range so that the particles rotate. So for this we set the two range 0 to 360. Now right click on the out of the math and attach a null. This null we're going to use for the rotation. So let's go ahead and rename it to rotation. Now we're going to reference this rotation to the rotate up of the geo here, which is carrying the instances. Once we do this, we set Rx for rotate X, Ry for rotate Y and Rz for rotate Z. And now we get the particles moving like a field around our sphere. Next, we're going to transform the background. Let's press tab and add a grid sub. Right click to its out and attach a null sop. Next, attach a geometry after the null. Right click in between the grid and the null and attach a transform. We'll use this to scale the background. So in the parameter window, set the uniform scale to around 4.24. Now press tab and create a line material. Drag the material and drop it onto the new geo and select parameter material. Here again, I only want the rows of the grid to show. So back to the parameter window, I'll set the primitive type to NURBS and the connectivity to rows. In the parameter window of the transform, we'll set the rotate Z to minus 45 degrees, the translate Z to minus 1 and the rotate X to 24. And we get this shifted perspective of the grid. We will also increase the scaled X value to around 1.9 and the Y scale value to 2.3. Go to the grid next and increase the number of rows all the way up to 50. And I'm going to go back again to the transform and change the scale values once more since the edges here are not aligning. Then I'm just going to change the color in the line material to make the lines a bit more subtle. This doesn't really matter, you can have here any color you want or just leave it as it is. But for the next step I also want to color the instances. I will create another noise in here. And in the parameter window, I'll set the resolution so that I get the same amount of points as the null 1, which is driving our whole animation. The Y parameter of the resolution I'll set to 1, and in the X parameter we'll type in op, then open brackets, null 1, close brackets, and then dot num points, and while we're in here, Let's go ahead and toggle off the monochrome parameter. Then right click on the out of the noise, add a null and rename the null to color. Now we go back to the geo where the instancing is happening and on the second instancing tab we drag and drop the null to the color up and then we go R, G and B. Now if we go back to the noise and switch up the values we can see what type of effect we get and decide what works best for us.
Once we've decided, we can go and play around with the transparency of the material of the sphere. So first, we can go up to the common tab of the material and toggle off the blending. Then go to the alpha tab and set the alpha value so that the sphere is only slightly visible. From here we can animate both our geos from up here. So we go to the parameter window and in the rotate y we type in the expression times 10 We repeat the same process with the geo1 and type in the same expression. If you're here and you notice the render doesn't look so clear or the program has slowed down, what you can do is select all the nodes in our network and turn off the viewer. This will give us a performance boost. And this is basically it for the main visuals. What you can do from here to change things up is you could bypass the limit node here in case you want the particles here to be more straight line shaped. And right now we're also using a constant material here because this material is cheaper to compute. But if your computer can handle it, you could instead replace the constant material with a line material. This can give you more flexibility, meaning you can control how the lines look with the parameters of the material. Otherwise, you can change up the window length of the trail to get longer lines or you could play around with the amplitude of the LFOs. What we could also do is attach a math operator after the limit and if we change the multiply value we can affect how close or far the lines are to our shape. And down here if you want to have more control over the colors of the particles you can copy this expression of the resolution on the noise here and then create a ramp top and in the common tab of the parameter window we set one row and for the columns we paste the expression we just copied. Now from here if we connect the ramp to the network we can now set the gradients of the colors ourselves. And so as we see there are endless possibilities in here. I'm curious to see what you come up with and your own versions of this animation. If you recreate this, do tag us on Instagram. Otherwise, this was today's tutorial. I hope you enjoyed watching and learned something. If you want us to make a specific tutorial or have a question, just let us know in the comments. Please subscribe to the channel to support us in creating more tutorials like this and I will see you next Friday with another tutorial. Until then, have a great time. Bye!